OK. OK, hi everyone. This is just going to be a short video where I'm going to show you how to export vector files from Blender. Now these can be used uh, in two different ways. Uh, they can be used to make robotic drawings, but they can also be used to prepare things for the laser cutter. So let's have a little play around. So the first thing I have to do is I have to enable a plugin in Blender. So if I go Edit, Preferences, and in this little search bar, we're in Add-ons, I'm just going to put SVG, which means Scalable Vector Graphics, I think. And you want to make sure uh, both of these are ticked. Um, import, Export, you don't need it for now, but maybe later. And But most importantly, Render Freestyle SVG Exporter. So make sure they're ticked and um, you know save your preferences. OK, so I'll show you what we've just done. If I delete everything in my scene, actually, no, I'll just de delete the cube and the light. We don't need those. Uh, actually, look, let's keep the light. Why not? All right, so I'll add in um, the monkey, uh, mesh monkey. OK, now, in order to render a vector file, which is something that um, uh, robotic actuators like drawing plotters or laser cutters need. We need to tell Blender not to just render a pixel image, but to render a, ve a vector file. So what we can do is go to um, the Render tab, and we have to tick Freestyle SVG and Freestyle. So tick both of those. And then we have to go into, ooh, I think the, let me remember this. OK, down the bottom of the layer properties, we've also got a freestyle thing now that's been set up. And I'm going to untick these, and I'm just going to use edge mark first. And I'll show you what that'll do. Um, it'll render all of the edges of our form as long as we tell it that they're freestyle edges. So in edit mode, I just press A, and it makes sure all the edges are selected. Then I right click and say, mark freestyle edge, and they'll go green like that. So now if I go to my animation tab, and OK, good, my camera is pointing at the monkey. So uh, the last thing I have to do is I have to set an output path. And this is important, because this vector file is actually going to go straight out of Blender to somewhere else. So you know, let's put it somewhere intelligent. I'll put it in my teaching folder. Um, where are we? Digital tools, and I'll call it um, um, vector files. I haven't set this up at all. I should also um, save my file. File, save as, and let's go al also to digital tools and start setting our stuff up. Um, project files, and let's call it Blender project files. And I'll save this as vector. Vector, <laughs> vector export dot blend. Okay, great. So now we're all nice and safe. Okay, so the last thing I have to do is I have to set, okay, I've set my output path there. Good. So let's do a render. Render, render image. And we, we got two things. We got our regular, um, you know, render of this colorless um, monkey, but we also got these lines. Now what these lines are showing us, if we go to um, uh, that folder that we just set up, yeah, blah, 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 teaching, ugh, ugh, ugh. Um, digital tools, vector files. Oh, it's gone here. It's gone to the root. OK, so we have this file here, which we can open. Um, we can just open it straight in the browser. So what we have is a vector file. And this vector file can then be sent to um, you know, a laser cutter or, um, yeah, or the robotic drawing machine or whatever. So that's one of the things that we're going to prepare for this week. So now, of course, we can start to do things in a little bit more of an advanced way. So for example, oops, I don't want to delete my camera. If I get rid of the monkey, let's say I want to make a, I don't know, if I want to cut a square, for example. Um, well, here we've got a square. Maybe we want a rectangle. Maybe I want the scale on the x to be 2. And we want to make this vector file. What we do is we want to set the camera so it's pointing straight down like that. I'll grab it on the x-axis, move it up, and I'll just make sure that I'll press Control-0 here to say that I'm looking through that camera. And then I'll set that camera to orthographic. 
and orthographic will just mean that there's no perspective warping it. We're looking straight at our um, rectangle. And let's say we wanted to make two of them. I just duplicate that. Uh, might make sense to rotate this camera. RZ90. So I've rotated it. I'll just reposition it. And the camera is too small. So orthographic, if we move the camera, it doesn't change the scale because there's no perspective. We have to change the, the, um, the scale on the camera itself. But OK, so here's our object. And again, we go into edit mode, um, right click, mark freestyle edge and do the same for the other one right click mark freestyle edge now one important thing is that when we set um, this you'll notice that the name of the file it makes will be the frame name so if I go back here um, you'll see that we've got this 0001 and I messed up I, I should have made it go into the vector files folder um, so if I hit render again it will overwrite that first one we made so either you should, you know, rename this to something else. We could call it monkey. Why don't we just do that now? Monkey test one. Because I'll show you, if I render this again, render, render image, we're going to have another file called, oh God, <laughs> I didn't change the file part, it's still here, called 001. But if I change the, um, the frame to, let's say, frame number 23, and I um, render the image again. And now I look in our folder. We've got number 23. So, you know, if you're making a lot of vector images, just change the frame that you're working on. And the next thing that we do, um, if we wanted to edit these vector images, is we'd go into a program called Inkscape. And I might just, I was working on something else. I'll just close all of this. Um, and I'll just open it again. Inkscape is where we will do... Um, any basic editing on our vector file. So if I wanted to bring this in, to bring in our monkey, I could go File, Import, and then go to, um, gosh, wherever I've been <laughs> doing all my work. Oh, this is going to be fun. On my PC, where is my Dropbox? Good gosh. Is it here? Yes. No. Peter, you need to think about this before you make a tutorial. And now you're talking to yourself during the tutorial. That's fun. Someone tell me where my Dropbox is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, Dropbox. Okay. Um, uh, now we want teaching, digital tools. Okay, so I'll go and grab the monkey test, open it up, and here's our monkey object. And um, we'll talk about this more in class, but, you know, we can now edit it individually. We can grab parts of it, move the vectors, double-click on it. We can even grab the handles and move them. So now we can edit it as a vector object that now we can do kind of interesting things with, such as sending it to the laser cutter and so on. Okay, so that's the end of this quick tutorial, just showing you how to um, export vector images from Blender. Okay, guys, see you soon.